guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia. Today we're going to be talking about how I graduated from Georgia State University with absolutely no debt. A little background, my major is political science. I got a bachelor's of arts. Um, my goal is to become an attorney, so I will be going to law school. I'm also 21 years old. So the first thing that really helped me to graduate debt free was joining dual enrollment as a high school student. As a senior, I decided to do dual enrollment. If you don't know what dual enrollment is, basically you can take college classes as a high school student for free. I'm not sure if it's free all over the country, but in my state, it was free. You can take any college class, I believe. Um, I personally took English 1101, Sociology 1101, and Speech 1101, so those were very easy classes for me. I did pretty good in them and I got those credits. They transferred to my university, Georgia State University, and I didn't have to take those classes again when I started my undergraduate degree. You can also take AP classes. I did take one AP class, but I do recommend dual enrollment over AP classes. Let me know if I should do a video on that because I think it's a very important topic. I think dual enrollment is very good if you want to save money. Like, I would advise you to start your junior year, the sooner the better and just take as many college classes as you can. Um, I did not have to go to my high school campus. I just drove to the community college and I'm pretty sure you can do community colleges or any college around you that does dual enrollment. The next thing that helped me a lot was the FAFSA, you know, federal financial, financial aid. I qualified for the HOPE scholarship. This is in Georgia. Um, you're a Georgia high school student. You're a resident of Georgia and your GPA was over 3.0, you qualify for the HOPE scholarship. Scholarship basically covers a portion of your tuition. It covered a lot of mine, thankfully, so that was a major reason why I graduated debt-free in college. Certain things you have to make sure you do when you have the HOPE scholarship, you need to make sure that your grades are above a certain GPA. So I know you have to have at least a 3.0. Um, there might be more specifics, but I know I kept above a 3.0 all four years and I didn't lose HOPE Scholarship. If your GPA goes below a certain number, then you will lose HOPE Scholarship. Also, with the HOPE Scholarship, you have to take a certain number of credit hours. I'll also put on the screen and I'll put the link down below just in case you guys want to read up about the HOPE Scholarship. I also wrote down the things I'm talking about. But it's very important that you maintain your grades when you are on HOPE scholarship so you don't lose it. I know Georgia also has like the Zell Miller scholarship. Basically, if you had like a 4.0 in high school, you did very, very good. Cover a portion of your schooling. So with financial aid, they also show you which grants you qualify for. So grants also helps me so I didn't have any debt. Grants are very good. Doing your FAFSA on time and seeing what you qualify for. The HOPE Scholarship, you can take summer classes, so I highly recommend taking summer classes. It is kind of difficult because, you know, the classes are, the regular classes that are shortened into like one to two months, so definitely keep that into consideration. I definitely recommend taking summer classes because I think they're kind of cheaper. I have to look up at it. You just have to look up at your school and see what the prices are, but summer classes should be cheaper. Another thing I recommend to do is take a lot of online classes if you're comfortable taking online classes. I know with my school, online classes were a bit cheaper, I believe, so I definitely recommend doing online classes. For example, let's say it's an English class, you can take that online because it's literally, it's not as hard as like chemistry or mathematics where you need in-person instruction. Most times they're just better just to take online because it's you don't have to go in person and you know, commute to your school or walk to class. You just take it on. I personally liked online classes better in college, but then again, like it is nice going to class. You know, the pandemic changed all of that. So it's just depending on your school, if they do online classes. Oh, depending on your school, if they do in-person or online right now. Another thing I want to talk about is textbooks. I research the textbook your professor is asking. I would make sure online to see what's the cheapest option to get your textbooks because I know textbooks pile up. Like I've had textbooks that were like over $200 so that is money that could go into debt. So I highly recommend just looking on your options online, googling the actual exact book and seeing what options are out there. I know Amazon they do rentals and they're most of the times very cheaper or look for used books on Amazon 
or just see different websites like Chai. There's many textbook websites that you can search on there. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about is first thing you do when you see what textbook you need, I would recommend typing the title of the textbook into Google and then adding PDF or free PDF to see if there's any PDF file you can download for free. By doing that, it has saved me tons and tons of money because people just put the PDFs online and you can just download it to your computer and have it for and also if you're familiar with group, online group chat with your class and then many times people will find the PDF files so I definitely recommend um, joining your class group me and maybe someone will post your textbook or access code or anything another thing that helped me a lot was not doing a dorm throughout college I know some people want to do dorms to get the college experience like during your freshman year because that is the time to socialize and you know really get comfortable into school but I did not do a dorm because I did not want to have a lot of student debt so I just stayed home saved my money so that was a big factor but if you want to get your experience definitely try would recommend clicking at scholarships there's tons of scholarships available for literally anything you can write essays and get scholarships so I know there's like scholarship websites you just see what you can do another thing that I did personally during college was budgeting and saving my money. I did not spend a lot of money during college. The most I did spend was on gas to commute from school and back home. So definitely budgeting is very important during college. You know, not wasting your money freely. Of course, have fun, but don't go crazy. Thousands of deaths. I don't, you have to think like, okay, I don't want to graduate with thousands and thousands in debt. Like, I'm pretty sure education is the biggest factor of debt in this country so definitely you know always have that in the back of your head seeing what you can do to minimize the amount of debt you accumulate during college and I also recommend getting a little part-time job if you can I know sometimes college schedules are crazy so it is hard to juggle you know work life and school if you are able to try and get an on-campus job or just any little part-time job just to have spending money and to save money for school. Another option is to have a summer job and just work more hours in summer. A lot of a lot of jobs are more understanding with college students so they're more willing to give you hours when you need it. I'm also going to be doing a video on how to get on the Dean's List in college so if you're interested in seeing put in the link down below. So that's basically it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions please let me know down below. Please subscribe to my channel.